Hello. Um, as you can see here, uh, I have quite a bit of steel books. Um, I've talked about uh, some of these movies already, you know, like, uh, and you've seen them or seen them if I've gotten them and such, and uh, uh, perhaps talked about them later, or in some cases, some of these I haven't talked about uh, yet. Um, as you can see, I have quite a bit that I've already sort of uh, seemed to cannot recall exactly just how many I have, and I'm pretty sure that is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all I've got, and I know all here and there and some here, but, uh, you know, steel books and such, um, I know there are people who love to have every single kind of steel book they can of a certain movie that they enjoy, and there are others who aren't interested in the steel books at all, and I completely understand that, um, for me, it kind of just comes down to um, sort of the movie itself. Like, you know, if I've seen the movie, like I saw in the theater, or, uh, you know, and if I really enjoy it, will I actually, do I think it's worth the extra price to have it in a cool uh, steelbook type uh, of a film or do I get it just as a normal uh, Blu-ray or DVD in some cases there are some DVDs that had uh, steel books I do have one of them here but you know it's like you know do I uh, actually go out and you know, just decide to uh, spend the extra couple bucks or not um, and depending on the movie sometimes I think it is kind of worth it, just because sometimes the steelbook is just looks more appealing than the normal average uh, uh, covers and just whatever they have to uh, that you're gonna look at for like a uh, steelbook or normal. I guess I should say more of a normal Blu-ray or DVD. Like the steelbook can sometimes be way more appealing to look at, and sometimes the steelbook looks pretty unimpressive. And just overall, what they have to offer for a steelbook is not worth getting. And so, you know, that's where I am. And that's how I uh, uh, kind of uh, stand on such matters and I will kind of get into some of other steel books and stuff that I would like to get but for one reason or another I haven't and um uh, yeah I'll get there you know when you know when, when I get there um but first I because the horror stuff is very small I thought I might as well talk about it soon and this was I I'm pretty confident this is the first steel book I ever got in my life uh, in terms of like not a set but uh, just like a, for a single film because sometimes certain sets and stuff like a steel book I, which I do have some nature thing but it's kind of buried elsewhere and it's kind of like it's just kind of difficult to get at the moment but these are all the stuff that were pretty easy to get and um, obviously here's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh I got this because, well, it's a two-disc set, and uh, this just looked more appealing to me at the time of uh, getting the film, and um, the inside kind of looks cool. You know, some of these steel books, depending on how old they get as time goes on, kind of sometimes you kind of have to be a little careful with them.
I would also like to just get the Blu-ray one day uh, of the 40th anniversary edition with all the... I'm pretty sure it has all this stuff plus more. Uh, last I checked, but I just never got the, the, the Blu-ray for whatever reason. It's pretty... It's not cheap, but it's pretty uh, reasonable now, and I believe the 4K is out. Though I don't know if the 4K has as much special features as uh, the 4-disc. You know, they had two D Blu-rays and two uh, DVDs for the 40th anniversary. So I might just get that. Um, even though the 4K presentation might be excellent, I just thought, you know, I, I, at least I've been thinking, you know, uh, you know, as long as that's at a pretty decent price just to get that. Um, but this is like my first steel book. Um, and it's a pretty good, uh, you know, the movie itself is good. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, this steel book is pretty cool. It's pretty sturdy. I do my best to take care of, obviously, all of my movies that I own, but I think Steelbooks in particular try to be just as careful with, if not more so, due to the fact that they can, you know, dent, and that's not fun. And next is Evil Dead, the remake. And um, some of these I don't have the things over, but uh, for all the information... There's somewhere in some box. I'm like, I'm going to just put them all there. And then I thought at some point, just get some of them out. But then sometimes you rearrange stuff. You, know, you take things, play, put them one place and another. And some of them aren't as easily, uh, aren't able to find as easily as others. But, you know, here's this. And, uh. There's a blood. Blood will rain. Of course, uh, Bruce Campbell uh, appears at the very end of this, just to say groovy. That might be seen as a spoiler to some, but considering he does nothing but that and looks at the camera, there's your Ash cameo for uh, the Evil Dead remake reboot thing. It's like a. Yeah, it's like it's. It's its own thing, but at the same time, it's like remaking the original, but without the characters like Ash isn't there, because obviously he's at the end and it's still Bruce Campbell. So it's basically like a reboot. Sort of a hybrid of a remake and a reboot. It's quite interesting. I, I enjoyed this film. I know some people hate it, but it's not the worst thing ever. It's pretty decent, uh, for what it is at least, uh, I think. But well, what do I know? Um, and I have all the Evil Dead films. The other ones are on DVD, and I have the original on Blu-ray. But, uh, yeah. Now, I've already talked about these films. A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place Part 2. Um, yeah, nothing more to say. Uh, really love these films. Uh, really great. And, uh, these steelbooks are pretty cool. I think just uh, pretty appealing. I think it's just uh, yeah, nothing too much more to say. There is a you know the, there is going to be another film, but it'll be like a spinoff called Day One, which we've actually already seen uh, from the perspective of the Abbott family and some of the people, uh, such as. Uh, Kelly and Murphy's character, uh, Emmett, you know, his uh, family, or at least his character, you know, we see him and them kind of interact before, you know, all, everything that we see in this film and then later in this film happens. So there's going to be another film called uh, Quiet Place Day One, uh, at least so far it's called that. And, uh, they're basically going to go and uh, 
have a whole movie about the the first day of uh, the alien creatures arriving and terrorizing people. You know, so we won't just with this family we saw a glimpse, but we're gonna see a whole film about that with uh, people not related to these characters, at least not so far. Um, but John Krasinski uh, is aiming to do a whole uh, a third film at least. And uh, if the steel books look pretty good like these two, then you know uh, I'll probably get that the third film in a steel book as well. Uh, the last horror film I've got in a steelbook form is Scream. Of course, it's the 25th anniversary, and I already kind of highlighted this a bit uh, when talking about all the Scream films uh, for, like, the 25th anniversary, 4K, and uh, it's really good. Um, really good film and really good uh, steelbook. It's also more, I think, interesting. Do you like scary movies? Oh yeah, there's a... Actually, uh... The disc has actual art, cover art. Which is kind of amazing. Considering how a lot of days, uh, a lot of, uh, or at least these days, a lot of it has to, or it's just pretty black or blue or some basic color with the, like the, the font of the, uh, for the title, like the interesting uh, font and such, but yeah. So uh, that's uh, the horror stuff, and here's Django Unchained. Already talked about this film. I enjoy it. It's the cool uh, stuff here, and uh, yeah, there is a DVD, but I have that somewhere else for like traveling and such. I like to put DVDs, some DVDs in like a, a CD case, like all those CD cases you'd have, and people would have in cars. I have that and just put a whole bunch of my favorite movies in like uh, some and then just take them with when traveling because sometimes when you travel you know you stay like at a hotel might have or a certain place they don't always have blu-rays interestingly enough these days you know if you're gonna have like uh like a like at a certain residence like when i was in florida you know they did have like a dvd player uh but not blu-ray so so that's where the DVD is, but this has a bonus disc, all the same. And there's Zen from the scene, and well. Yeah, there's not much there, so. I don't want to just open up the stuff for all these movies. Sometimes, though, I do. Um, some of these have interesting stuff on the inside. Other times, not so much, but. Uh, so, yeah, that's Django Unchained. And, uh. And because the fourth film is coming out, I thought, you know, I might as well also show the John Wick films again. I've already talked about these on my channel. Uh, when I first got uh, the first two, I got them, they were at uh, Steelbook at Best Buy. Uh, at a pretty decent price, too. They weren't stupid expensive. So sometimes they'll have them. At fair prices, you know, DVDs, Blu-rays and DVDs, and this is the 
4K and Blu-ray and the normal Blu-ray plus digital copies. Um, and the fourth one will come out uh, at the end of this month, just like the Scream 5 will, uh, or 6, not 5. I already saw Scream 5, and as you all know, I wasn't that impressed, but Scream 6 will be out, and um, I might wait just like I did the fifth film, wait, and then I might talk about it more proper when I get it on Blu-ray or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Rather than next week or whatever, me talking about Scream 6, you know, just, you know, just expect it in a few months or so, whenever that's out on Blu-ray and such, that will probably, uh, uh, wait to discuss, uh, that film, uh, when it's released on home video. But John Wick 4, or Chapter 4, I should say, I think you could probably, it would be fair to say, in the next week after I've seen it in the theater. So I'll probably see it in the first weekend, or the weekend it comes out. Probably watch watch it. And I'm also going to watch all three of these. And I had to make sure I actually talked about all these films, because I thought I did, but on the off chance I didn't. But I could just, you know, re-watch all these, because I was going to anyway, and then also make videos about them, but I don't have to do that. I guess I could. But, uh, pretty, be pretty redundant, I think, because I enjoy all these films. Um, you know, so, uh, sure, some of, sure, I think the first one is the very best, but, you know, the second and third are very good and entertaining all the same, so. And I like this. It's pretty cool. I like all these covers. They're pretty cool, and uh, also unique. Hacksaw Ridge, very good film. Uh, Mel Gibson, uh, really back on his game with this film uh, after sort of being blackballed due to, you know, comments he made, you know, he went drunk. Uh, yeah. You know, people make stupid mistakes like him and, well, he... got blackball and then of course also when he was you know really angry at his uh, ex-girlfriend I'm pretty sure you know he you know got really angry and just you know when people get heated in a moment just unleash don't always think clearly and uh, plus also he uh, was recorded so that obviously did not help anything for him but still a great actor and filmmaker and um, he's gonna make a Passion of the Christ, uh, a sequel to that, and uh, also Lethal Weapon 5, because uh, Richard Donner had passed away, and so obvious, for obvious reasons, he can't direct it, so Mel Gibson is going to, and um, 1917, yeah, that just fell, so neat, um, Uh, but yeah, this was kind of cool. I just kind of wish this was a little different, but it is what it is. And plus, also, you get to see the cool little thing from that scene in the film. Uh, it's a very good film. Now, this is a movie I know for a fact I have not uh, talked about. The Kingsman. 
uh, Sacred Service. I've seen the second film, but I don't own it. And um, I don't enjoy it as much as the first film. And I haven't seen the prequel to it, so I have absolutely no comment on that film. Um, but, uh, yeah, this film is uh, pretty good, uh, you know, overall. Uh, very entertaining. And uh, you got uh, Colin Firth, Samuel L. Jackson, Mark Strong, Taron Nick, uh, Edgerton, and uh, Michael Caine, amongst many others. And I uh, already talked about American Psycho, but again, here is the uh, steel book with the cool slipcover that uh, uh, Lionsgate does. Lionsgate has been, you know, when it comes to like steel books, they're really co good about that. Um, and also, has, also, of course, has the 4K disc. Uh, El Camino, the Blu-ray I got was Steelbook, because, well, it actually was pretty uh, uh, affordable, and it was actually, I think, about seven bucks at, like, uh, Best Buy. Of course, these days, Best Buy doesn't have as many Blu-rays and DVDs on the shelves as much as they used to, but this is at a time when it was pretty affordable, or, like, I think... Uh, a sale was going on, and this was from 2012, and this was like probably like five years, but uh, it was like dropped enough in price where actually it might have been like 10 bucks. I don't know. I I'm trying to guess. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard uh, some years ago to about how much something cost, but yeah, it, it wasn't that expensive, so I did not mind getting it because I wanted it on Blu ray anyway, but. But pretty cool, um, you know, simple uh, or affordable and all that. So, uh, yeah. El Camino, uh, Breaking Bad movie, which as far as I know is like the only way you can get it on physical media, at least here in America, which is completely fine. Though the spine, there's no nothing on the spine, which is kind of a bummer. But on the back, you've got, yeah. If I could have it not upside down, that'd be good. Um, and, uh, yeah, here's the Blu-ray and the DVD. Just really, like, just red on the inside. And, uh, yeah, just a normal uh, silver kind of thing with black stripe. So, yeah. Anyway, this is a good film. I still enjoy it, no matter what. People say, you know, unnecessary. Doesn't need to exist. And, well, basically everybody in the uh, law, uh, Vince Gilligan in particular, says, you know, this film doesn't need to exist. But it does, so there you go. And it's cool that this film is, uh, has, uh, is multiple regions, so... A, B, and C. Um, and this film is not rated because it came out on Netflix. It is a TV film. Now in Canada, it is uh, 14A. Of course, language, violence. There you go. But here in America, it's just not rated. Which is completely fine. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, here is uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Which, uh, has all the region two, uh, you know, ratings on them. Even though it is region free, both the Blu ray and the 4K discs. 4K discs are always region free, but the but Blu rays aren't always you know, normal Blu rays. But yeah, this definitely works here, and that's always good. Um, uh, I got this from uh, the website Zavi, and I wanted to talk about some 
again, you know, uh, some of the, you know, films I want to get but don't, and I'm going to get into why I don't have them here with uh, this one. Uh, there are six uh, steel books of Star Wars, you know, the one through six, episodes one through six. Now, they did this for all of them, including the Disney films. Uh, Zabi did, but you know, I never knew about them until way later. And by the time I did know about them, I saw all of these, and I knew basically nothing about the site. And when I did go, it's like, oh, well, a lot of it seems to be just region two stuff, so I can't play that here in region one land. Um, but then I found out that they actually do produce blu-rays normal blu-rays that are also region free so all that is unnecessary but because i had the, i saw this on the front of all that and also when i did realize all well not all of that but before and and when i tried to get as much information as i could outside of the ratings i didn't know i didn't know what was all on them I didn't know if you could have it region-free on the back because they didn't have that. I didn't know any of that stuff. And so I just automatically assumed, maybe very foolishly, but, you know, being somebody who, when I see this, basically that means being an American, I can't play that without a region-free player uh, for, like, Blu-ray. And I don't have a region-free player. And so, as a result, I can't get those films but then i realized that all that never mattered because all of those blu-ray discs are completely on the star wars movies i'm going all over the place and i'm completely sorry but this is the only way i know i can do it properly but when i figured out all that with zavi those uh prices were pretty much no, and uh, episode four, I realized, was the absolutely very first uh, steelbook that was gone. It was just gone. You know, the 4K and the Blu-ray combo pack and stuff and all that stuff. And the special features they have on those six films are the kind that are not at all included on any of the other stuff. Not on the DVDs, not on the normal Blu-ray, like nine disc set that I got, you know, none of that. And as a result, it's like, well, dang, I, I would like to get that. But there's a bit of a conundrum because, you know, I could get the normal 4K stuff, but with those discs here, but at the same time, uh, that's Disney and uh, produced, or those are all produced by Disney. And, you know, I, I would like to give not as much money to Disney as I really can. So if there's like another party that is involved, like Zavi, for instance, you know, they're, they are partnering with them, but at the same time, you know, and while they do get a cut of it, uh, you know, they're not, Disney is not the ones actually making stuff like this. Like in this instance, Paramount was not exactly the ones who made this. This was, well, they might have been, but still a lot of the bulk of the money will be going to that site. And then a little bit will go to uh, Paramount, and no doubt enough that is uh, obviously uh, agreed upon, so that you know Zavi themselves will have them listed at a certain price, which might be uh, either completely astronomical compared to normal, you know, be a <clears throat> normal uh, steelbook stuff or. Or if prices you would normally ever find them, and in other cases, not so much. Um, it just depends on the film. This obviously is an incredibly popular film, so this was a little pricier. But I, uh, I don't believe I. This was a huge uh, expense because I think it was also a sale around the time I got this, so it was pretty reasonable. Regardless, though, uh, you know, Zavi's the one that got it. And, you know, considering they've made the steel books and stuff like this. I wanted to get the Star Wars stuff when I got that. But, of course, it was way too late. 
and um, when you go to eBay, it was like 75 bucks or over 100 bucks for the unopened, unwrapped, or the completely wrapped version of uh, A New Hope. And I'm like, well, that's quite pricey. And then also, when I do see episodes one through six on the Steelbooks, because the Steelbooks actually look way better than what uh, Disney has put out for 4K. It just, they, they just do. Uh, and hence why I kind of wanted those Steelbooks for like 4K, if I was going to get those six movies on 4K. Uh, but of course, they're all out of print now, and if you want to get them, you have to pay astronomical prices on like eBay and uh, 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 Amazon and whatever sites that sell movies and uh, things of the sort. And so it's like, yeah, I'm never going to get that, especially when I want to try and, you know, get all six of them. I'm only able to find places where they'll sell all the all the ones George Lucas did, plus the ones Disney has done. And I'm like, I, I don't want the Disney ones. Now, I know some people might actually uh, bargain with people, you know, and be able to ha uh, talk about uh, uh, having some of the movies, like if it's like a bundle thing, and, you know, they'll like reduce the price and can negotiate to where it's, you know, reasonable on all accounts. But some people will not be very reasonable and so it will be very ridiculous prices all the same it's like you know you either buy all nine or actually I think eleven because Brogue One and Solo are there too so you either buy all eleven or you get none of them at all and it's like I only want six I don't want the other five you can keep those five and then sell them off if you can but no and it's like well I'm sorry, I'm not interested in that, but yeah, it's just like the prices for those six are very expensive, and it's like, yeah, well, whatever. Uh, it, plus, also, the covers are kind of just not that amazing, in my opinion. They're not that incredible. Because that's part of the thing. If you're going to get a steel book, you want it to look as presentable as possible and look cool. Um,. And either they'll be, sometimes they're the same in a way, like the normal uh, uh, Blu-ray uh, cover, and sometimes they'll be different. Uh, yeah, this, this is not the same as the Blu-ray I have, but still, you know, it's... Uh, It's not the same, so I know I kind of went on this like tangent, and I apologize, but still, you know, this is a you know this site, the Zavi dot com is is you know it's pretty cool that well, they have certain steel books that look awesome, but also you've got to really uh, get in there real fast, like pre order and such, because otherwise you will be they will be sold out, and then you will if you really want. Like something like this really bad you'll have to go to amazon or ebay and look for sellers that actually have them at a decent price and uh yeah, sometimes that's easier said than done but yeah so just a tip if you ever want to go onto like zavi and you know be it for steel books or whatever you know, because they have, like, certain things I pack. You can only get there, and this is one of those. You can only get this from that site, and I believe that they don't sell them anymore. Or if they do, it might be, like, an annual thing. But so far, you know, uh, it's, it's sold out, and it didn't seem like they were going to have any more in the near future. But who knows, maybe around Thanksgiving time they will uh, start to make them uh, again. I don't know. And here is a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I showcased this before, but uh, yeah, I I don't believe I've talked about this film though.
this is one from a shout factory and um i got an email recently where uh, this is actually going to go out of print real soon and they showed some of the other ones and i do have uh some of the films not on steelbook but just on blu-ray but this is one i really wanted on steelbook because it just looked cool platoon Just, this just looked like a really cool cover and everything, so that's why I got it. And all the same contents are on the disc, so you know, while I gained nothing new at the same time, uh, has all the same stuff plus the this has a uh, brand new approved uh, 4K restoration uh, with approval from uh, Oliver Stone, so that's really cool. Uh, so if anything, there is a better transfer uh, for this because also it's Shout Factory, and they are well known for uh, giving the best treatment for movies and also shows as possible as they can, similar to Criterion Collection and uh, Arrow Home Video. So uh, yeah, there's Boys in the Hood. Uh, excellent film. I'll probably talk about this one day. I really enjoy this film. It's really good. Uh, Ice Cube did an excellent uh, job as did Cuba Gooding Jr. and Lawrence Fishburne and Angela Bassett. Uh, everybody involved did an excellent job. Morris Chestnut. Yeah. It's great film, great cast all the way around. It's an amazing... It's just amazing. Clockwork Orange. And I put the sticker of the 50th anniversary uh, on there from the... I was able to get it off of the uh, package it was on and then put it here because I thought, oh, why not? That would give it to some distinction. Alex's Droogs. And the discs are orange. I will say when they have a couple of discs, it is kind of annoying how they have them set set up on top of each other like this. Yeah, Alex and his drew got the milk bar with uh, drug-laced milk, uh, which makes a Makes it a very popular place. You know, you're able to have a great healthy milk with uh, some sort of uh, drugs involved in them. So that's always a fun time, you know, I, I think. You know, that's what a lot of people, I'm sure, think. So, uh, there was a Dr. Strangelove uh, for a kid, or a Four K. Well, there is a four K version of Doctor Strangelove, but there is a steel book of Doctor Strangelove. But uh, as you uh, know, as I've shown it off before, I have uh, that film on uh, the Criterion Collection, and it's a very good uh, edition. And uh, here are Eight Mile. Steelbooks. I've got this is just Blu-ray. Uh, it's like five bucks at Target, so that's why I got it. And this one has a 4K. And uh, yeah, this one wasn't five bucks, but it was. Uh,
pretty uh, decent transfer all the same and standard normal uninspired blu-ray discs uh, the end of the film Uh, 4K transfer on this film is also uh, really excellent. I do like how they at least made an effort for the normal blur, uh, 4K, the 4K Blu-ray disc to have like a, this in the actual sort of like font, sort of the actual movie logo, and a pretty cool background like a like a, it's like a map. Of sorts of like a uh, Detroit. I don't know if you can see all the details. Probably not. But if you have this, or at least a 4K version of the disc, yeah, it's similar to this. You you know already know that, but yeah. Good film. So good. I have two steel books of it. Uh, and my uh, couple of. Best Buy uh, exclusive steelbooks uh, of Christopher Nolan films at like Tenet. And uh, this is just them in the car. This is just the bullet through the window or through a window or glass, whatever. Uh, windows are have glass, but I guess there could be a window without glass, but that'd be interesting and probably odd. Dunkirk DVD is you know, one of those CD things, but yeah, there's. Fire and a huge ship coming out, and there's a little boat. And uh, this disc basically has this, so that's pretty cool. And I thought this <coughs> steel book was cooler and better than the <coughs> normal cover. Same with Tenet. Tony Montana, Scarface. And the original 30s film on DVD. And I've already showcased this, so I don't need to show more already. I've already made a video on that. I think I, at least, yeah, at least once. Reservoir Dogs. I've already talked about this version. on the inside just like the uh, American Graffiti one or American Graffiti American Psycho yeah American Graffiti American Psycho all the same we begin, begin with American Lawrence of Arabia the 4k in two discs which I didn't actually address before but I'm pretty sure from some of the stuff I've Kind of red. They tried to do a uh, uh, I believe they did a 4K uh, 
uh, version normally, or like one 4K disc and three, or then two other normal Blu-ray discs. And apparently there was some, I guess, problem for whatever reason with that transfer on uh, on like the one disc. I don't know why for the 4K, but so I've heard, but I can't confirm that. You know them uh, splitting the film onto two discs so that it can, the, the whole full resolution of 4K is able to be there and present. So after the you know the uh, <clears throat> the first disc has its intermission, uh, you can then put the second disc in, and there you go. Uh, but yeah, great film though. Uh, I love it. I, I I really love it. And the last movies I I have are also movies I've talked about a lot. So much so, you all are probably tired of hearing about them from me. The Dark Knight Trilogy. Yeah, nothing too special there, just the disc. And that's the back. These are not in 4K, but normal Blu-ray discs. But that's completely fine all the same, though, I think. There's the Dark Knight. Again, just the normal discs. And the Dark Knight Rises. So this has something on the inside, so that's pretty cool. Blu-ray of the movie, special features, and the DVD. You have to be very careful not to getting out. So there you go, there is the poster with Bane walking away, whereas this just has the mask broken on the ground. So the third film, The Dark Knight Rises, had something special with it, but not the first two. And, you know, that's, yeah, that's really it. That's all I have now. Uh, I know it's quite a bit, but honestly, I built, compared to all the movies I do own, This is all very small in comparison. Obviously, there's a whole shelf and other things over all there. Hello. Um, I uh, realized that I forgot uh, <clears throat> something uh, within all that uh, talking and uh, all the steel books and stuff that I had, which is um, I forgot Fargo. The Shout Factory Steelbook that I got. Um, there is that and back and the front of the twentieth uh, anniversary. <clears throat> and uh, I had a feeling I forgot something, but, um, you know, it's one of those things, like, I, 
looked around and I thought I looked everywhere except one certain area because I thought ah, nothing re was really there. And of course, the one area I don't check is the one with the <laughs> only major steel book really I have left that I didn't talk about. So there you go. Here is here's Fargo. Uh, the Steelbrook version from Shout Factory. It's a, it's a great disc, or great, oh, great release overall. And the, and the disc is pretty great, too. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we can uh, uh, get back to the video to uh, properly conclude it. Why would you get a steel book over a normal uh, Blu-ray or 4K uh, version of the movie with the typical normal co uh, cover? Well, it's because like, this looks cool. And if it doesn't look cool, uh, it's not really worth <clears throat> the extra price. Usually these will go <clears throat> uh, for a few more bucks. You know, a couple more bucks, and sometimes it's it'll be worth it just to have on the shelf. Other times, it's like it, that just doesn't look appealing. Um, one offhand was a steel book for the film Nobody. Just did not look very appealing, and it was like, yeah, uh, this looks cooler. I know this also uh, is just the normal Blu-ray. Um, they are making a. They are going to make a sequel to this. So, you know, if they do have a steel book with the sequel, and they do. And I know sometimes they re-release steel books or bring back steel books for like the previous installment. If they either didn't have them for the first installment or if someone else did, but all it was was really just this in steel book. It was like all like black, but then there's like yellow with the black words of nobody and that was really it there wasn't anything super special on the back either that would really make it worthwhile so i just got this um and i'm completely happy you know great film saw the theater talked about it and uh of course i got it uh, uh again uh <laughs> or I got it here and talked about it, I think, uh, a little bit again when I first bought it. Uh, yeah, I am rambling. This video really went on, but I also did kind of have quite a few movies to talk about with Steelbooks. And this has been an idea I've had for a while, talk about all my Steelbooks, because I don't have a whole lot compared to some people I've seen, you know, talk about movies and their collection. People with a lot more Steelbooks than me. And, um... Yeah, but these are all I've got, really. Um, and uh, yeah, I think these were worth the look and the presentation of the uh, few extra bucks when they were first came out. And in some cases, they were pretty uh, reasonable and on sale, or they had been out for so long and. Like the Unforget or the Gran Torino, not Unforget, but Gran Torino. I don't think it was out. They they sold too many steel books, and so it was pretty uh, uh, reasonably priced when I got it. I think also it was like on sale also, but I think the price that it was originally wasn't that expensive. So yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, my collection of steelbooks. Again, I'm not somebody like, oh, it's in a steelbook. i got to get that version. Because, again, sometimes the steelbooks don't look cool. Um, and nothing against the normal uh, covers at all of, of the, all of these films. Uh, but some of these just look more appealing, I think, than the typical normal cover you'd get. But that's me. So, yeah. Anyway, this video has gone on long enough, and I've rambled long enough, and I apologize for that. Um, 
if you've made it this far, you know, uh, thank you very much. You know, I'm sure some will have just quit at some point, and I wouldn't blame you if you did. But, yeah, this is a uh, Ice Steelbook collection. Probably not as impressive compared to some, but it's something. And, uh, yeah. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all have a great day. Great weekend and a great week. I'll see you all next time.